Hi, it's Mandy with Women Worshipful Living, and today we are continuing our study uh, with Good Morning Girls as we read the Bible. Um, and this month we are in the book of Genesis, and we have been studying the life of Joseph. And as I've been studying, the um, the character that has really stuck out to me as I've been reading is Judah. And I was, I think, I was fascinated with him because. I knew that he was in the lineage of Christ. And whenever I find somebody in scripture that I know is in Christ's lineage, I'm always like, oh, well, let me um, take some time and um, look at them more closely. And what I am finding as I study through Genesis is that, and I already kind of knew this, but the lineage of Christ is not perfect. God did not use the most perfect people in um, the creation of or in mankind to um, have Christ come through uh, their line. He used imperfect people. And that's what we're going to see today as we look at Judah. As I shared about in the um, blog post ahead, uh, Judah came from the line of, he was Jacob's son. Jacob, we know, was the, known as the deceiver before God changed his name to Israel. And when we find Judah, he is the fourth son of Jacob. Of Jacob, yes. And um, he is known for being a leader. Um, even though he has three older brothers, he is that natural born uh, leader that has the ability to speak up and share his mind. Well, he does. And he shares his mind. And that, instead of getting Joseph killed, gets Joseph sold into slavery. And so I can only imagine what that would be like to... Um, be the one that maybe helped your brother live, but still sold him into slavery. And the guilt that you would have lived with for years to come. The next time we see Judah, we see him in a not so great light. Uh, we see him in the story of Tamar. And Tamar was his daughter-in-law. And he had promised her his son after his first son had passed away that she had been married to. And then we see him um, him have a, have relations with her and almost then stone her uh, when he finds out that she's with child, only to find out that it, she is with his child. So we know that Judah is not um, the roaring lion that we often hear about um, the lion of Judah being. He is more of the cowardly lion like we hear about in uh, stories like the Wizard of Oz. So we get to Joseph's story and we get to the point where the famine has happened. Joseph's in leadership position and um, the brothers have come to Egypt to get food for their dad. And Joseph has extended um, grace to these these brothers, these brothers that he has forgiven in his heart, but yet he still doesn't know how they're going to respond when they find out that it's him. These brothers that he knows that his dream and the things that God had spoken in his heart that were going to happen, the brothers that detested that dream are now in reality living out the dream. And so um, that's where we're at in the story. Um, they may make make mention of another brother. So Joseph sends them back home to get the other brother. And Jacob is upset. He wants to know why in the world would the boys tell the Pharaoh's assistant that there was another brother. And Judah says, well, we weren't going to lie. He outright asked us if we had another brother, which we already begin to see that there was a change in Judah because Judah would have in the past probably acted quickly and would have said, nope, these are all of our brothers. Had he done that, Joseph would have known he was lying. He would have known that there wasn't um, any remorse on his brother's side for what they had done. They hadn't have changed from the people that they were um, back when he was a boy. And so the story would have played out very differently. But instead, they tell the truth, and they do the right thing, and they go back, and they get the brother. And Judah tells his dad, he says, I will take care of Benjamin. I will take care of him. So when they get back to Egypt, Joseph decides to find out to test these brothers just a little bit more, just to see if they're really who they say they are. And what's funny is that the test really falls to Judah. 
Judah, the one whose line Christ would follow. So Joseph has a silver cup that is placed into Benjamin's bag and it's found. It looks like Benjamin's going to be done for. He is now going to become a slave to Joseph. And instead of just letting his brother take the fall, Judah stands up for him. Um, he knows that this is not right. And he knows the pledge that he has made to his father, that he would protect and care for his brother, Benjamin. And so Judah says that he will be a slave for his brother so that his brother might go home and be with his father. Ladies, I don't know if you see where this might be going, but I see a beautiful picture of Christ. Jesus Christ is on the page of every, every page of our scripture, every page of our Bible, Jesus is there. And I believe that God allowed Judah to be an example of Christ's love in that moment. You see, we live in a world that is owned by someone else. And our father has decided that he wants us for his. And he has sent his son to be the protector of us, to be the savior of us, so that we could come and be with him. And that's what Judah did. He was protecting his brother so that his brother might go back to the father. Christ came, he made himself a servant, and he took on flesh, and he came and he died a death that we should have died ourselves so that we could be with the father, so that we could be reconciled, we could go back to our father. We didn't have to stay in Egypt anymore. We don't have to stay in our sin anymore. We can be in that relationship with God that it was always intended for us to be. And that's the picture that we see here. Judah was not going to let anything happen to his brother or to the will of his father. The will of Judah's father was that Benjamin would be saved, that Benjamin would return. And that is exactly what happens. However, what's different in the story of yours and my salvation is that Joseph at that point falls into tears and he lets himself be known to his brothers. And he also shows a picture of Christ by forgiving, forgiving for what is the hor most horrible thing that they thought could have happened to him. Joseph was later saying, what you meant for bad, God has used for my good. And ladies, that's where we're at. What has God used in your life? What bad, hard things has God turned and used for your good so that you can bring others into relationship with him? And how has God transformed you? Maybe you're like Judah. Maybe you have been a coward before. Maybe you have let others um, walk on you or uh, walk on our Lord. Maybe you have not stood up for him when you needed to. Maybe you have not shared the gospel when you knew the opportunity presented itself. Maybe you have not fed the hungry like you should or opened your home the way you should. There are a lot of ways that we can be Judas before he was um, the roaring lion. There are a lot of ways that we can be cowardly lions, but when we walk in the spirit and we allow God to use even those things that we ourselves or others mean for our bad, we too can turn our lives from being one way and into another. We can have a new life. We can have um, the abundant life that God promised us. And so that's where we're at today in our study. We have a choice to make. We can either, Judah had a choice. He could have let his brother been a slave. He could have said, you know what, Benjamin? Sorry about your luck. You are stuck being a slave. And he could have done that. But instead, he was willing to sacrifice. He was willing to give it all, just like Christ gave it all for us. And we need to be willing to do anything that it takes so that others may come into that same knowledge of saving grace with Jesus Christ. So today, I hope that you will worship God with your life as you go out and you live a life boldly because you have the roaring lion of Judah 
Jesus Christ living inside of you. Worship God with your life.